Hey, how's everybody doing today? Apologize for a little length on that uh, intro music, but man, I'm digging that jazz. Anyways, there was a pretty interesting discussion on the uh, University of Vermont FlowNet. If you're a vascular geek and you like that, you should check out UVM FlowNet, interesting discussion group. But we were talking about the ability of ultrasound to detect a vulnerable plaque. That is an ulceration or some sort of feature that may put the patient at increased risk. Reminded me of a case that I had from many years ago. Thought I would present that here. Hope you enjoy. One caveat before we get started, from any of the review of the literature that I've ever seen, really the only feature that suggests uh, a person may benefit from intervention is the severity of the stenosis. The ability to detect that vulnerable plaque has pretty much been the holy grail of vascular ultrasound for three decades, but remains largely unsolved. So, severity of the stenosis at this point, but I'm going to give you a little food for thought. So, here's four internal carotid arteries. The upper left, certainly not a significant stenosis. The upper right, again, some plaque along that anterior wall, but again, does not appear to be a significant stenosis. Same as the one in the lower left. However, note that plaque defect clearly delineated by that power Doppler. Now the lower right looks like a pretty significant flow limiting stenosis in that one. So let's take a closer look at the plaque morphology. All these ICA plaques have a homogeneous echogenicity and they also appear to have a relatively smooth surface. How about let's take a closer look at this lesion. Again, homogeneous echogenicity, but look at this clear plaque defect. Now we used to say an ulceration was a two millimeter defect within the plaque. That was actually an angiographic description. This kind of meets that de definition as well. So we can posit, is this an ulceration? Might meet the definition. But wait, this patient was asymptomatic. So let's revisit this lesion. This patient was actually hospitalized with multiple left hemisphere TIAs. Of course, the first order of business, we did a duplex scan. He had about a 50% internal carotid artery stenosis on the left. However, not really any flow changes. This felt was felt to be non-causative. He had a CT, which did reveal a small left hemisphere CVA. He had a transthoracic and a transesophageal cardiac echo, which was largely negative. He was started on antiplatelet medications and discharged. He was literally being wheeled out of the hospital and suffered another clear left hemisphere TIA. Interestingly enough, the physician says, let's take another look at his carotid duplex. So we repeated that. So let's compare the results. The original one done on October the 4th, uh, we already looked at a smooth homogeneous lesion. Look at the difference four days later on the 8th. Still kind of a homogeneous plaque, although a little bit more heterogeneous, but look at this large crater defect within that plaque. Big change in four days. And I even have a video to show you. Check this out. Clear plaque defect flow within that defect. This would certainly meet the definition of an ulceration. They did decide to operate on this patient. He underwent a left endarterectomy and did well. Symptoms stopped. So again, remember my caveat, 
this case presentation was really kind of the exception rather than the rule, at least in my book. I don't think we can actually do this routinely. Again, I would emphasize that the only risk of symptoms that has ever been validated is the severity of the stenosis. Hope you enjoyed. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, and it's getting towards the end of the year. If you need some Category 1 CME, please visit us at virtualveincenter.com.